Welcome to the two-part tutorial about incremental and differential backups. In part one, we will use animated illustrations to learn the basic concepts behind both backup types. We will cover the practical application of this knowledge in the second half of this two-part tutorial. Incremental and differential backups basically serve the same purpose, to speed up the process of regular backup procedures. This is achieved by focusing on the differences between two given backup sessions. This reduces the amount of data stored in the backup archive. The difference between the two methods lies in the manner in which these differences are handled. We can imagine incremental backups as increasing step by step, where each step depends on the step before. Differential backups compare only the differences between the first and the last step. We will begin with a precondition that applies to both backup types. Both incremental and differential backup series are based on a previously carried out full backup. That means that in any case to do an incremental or differential backup, there has to be a full backup archive from a previous session. We will use once again the example of backing up an operating system partition. To simplify matters, we will call the current data status of the example in the diagram state 0. This partition has typical data distributions of used and free sectors as well as areas reserved for swap and hibernation files. These concepts and the imagery used should be familiar from previous videos. In principle, it's possible to use both methods for disk imaging or for backing up files. Sticking to examples from previous videos and in order to enhance the clarity of the explanation, we will continue with the disk imaging example. We now come to our first scenario, where we start with the first step of an incremental backup series. We call this point in time state 1 where we can see that the partition has been changed in various different locations when compared with state 0. The changes from state 0 are signified by the red areas in the diagram. When you initiate an incremental backup, a Kronos 2 image concentrates only on the differences that exist between state 0 and state 1, which is the red colored data. In other words, the program compares the data in the full backup archive with the data on the current partition and creates an incremental archive file that only contains the changes that are not contained in state 0. We call this incremental backup backup 1. So far so good. We now come to our second scenario where we do a second incremental backup. You will see later that the two backup types only differ from this point onwards. We now have state 2, which constitutes our second incremental backup. Here we have additional partial changes to our partition, which are highlighted in green. These green changes constitute our second incremental backup, which becomes backup 2. So, state 2 is in fact state 0, with the variations of backup 1 and 2 included. At this point, it's important to understand that the incremental archive file just created depends on the full backup, as well as the first red-colored incremental archive data from backup 1. We will now look at how the incremental method influences the restoration process. The fact that we have three different archive files means that we are also able to recover three different stages that originally existed. The advantage of using the incremental method will become clearer when we examine each of our restoration scenarios in sequence. We start with scenario 3, with the most commonly used restoration situation where you want to restore the most current version of the partition. In this case, we will restore the partition to stage 2. At first, a Kronos 2 image selects the most recent incremental archive file, which the program then automatically combines with both older backups. These are the first incremental archive file followed by the full backup file. 
That means, in order to restore the most up-to-date state of the partition, we require all of the backup archive files that have been made up to that point in time. As we will see later, this is precisely where differential backups are different from incremental backups. But first, we will stay with our incremental backup method and look into the restoration of state 2 in a little more detail. Please be aware that a Chronostore image will restore any swap and hibernation files to their original size during the restoration process. These data files are so to speak empty and Windows fills them with data after the next system restart. This fact is only mentioned for the sake of completeness and doesn't play a role in understanding the topic at hand. The two remaining restoration scenarios can be explained quite quickly and easily. Restoring state 1 starts with the selection of the red colored archive data and combines this data with the original full backup data. The program can then restore state 1 on the disk drive on the basis of these two datasets. The second incremental archive file, backup 2, is not needed in this case. Scenario 5, where we restore state 0, is even easier. For this scenario, we only need the archive data from the full backup. The two incremental backup files play no role. So much for the concept of incremental backups.